Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a very interesting example of how total internal reflection is being used in technology to transmit messages over what we call a fiber optic cable. So imagine this to be like a glass cable and we used to make those glass cables in buildings and across oceans and everywhere we had light pulses used for communication across, across great distances. And the interesting part is that if you shine a light beam in like what we call a fiber optic cable at an angle so that when the beams hit the sides of the fiber optic cable, they will not leave the fiber optic cable, but they'll be totally internally reflected back into the cable and just keep on going. And so we already know that the angle of, of um, incidence upon a boundary from inside the cable, where maybe air is on the outside, that that angle must be at least the size of the critical angle. So here we're making the problem just a slightly bit more difficult. What if we shine a beam of light in at the very edge, which is perpendicular to the, um, to the cable? What is the largest angle that this uh, angle can be so that the light, once it enters the fiber optic cable, will still be totally internally reflected and keep going? It will not leave the boundary. If you make this angle too large, the beam will actually leave the fiber optic cable and, and that would not be very good. All right, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is look at this boundary right here and determine what theta sub 3 should be, understanding that the fiber optic cable index of refraction is equal to 1.5. So we use Snell's law where we say that N3 <coughs> sine of theta sub 3 is equal to N4 times the sine of theta sub 4. And, ago, and again, right, we want theta sub 3 to be equal to the critical angle in such a way that if we had a refracted angle, that would be theta sub 4, and we want to make that equal to 90 degrees in order to find the critical angle. So we say that n sub 3 times the sine of the critical angle is therefore equal to n sub 4 times the sine of 90 degrees. That would be just at the point where the light would then be totally internally reflected. So let's see what theta sub, sub c or theta sub 3 would be equal to. Of course, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, and so we can say that n sub 3 times the sine of theta sub c is equal to n sub 4. Dividing both sides by n sub 3, we get sine of the critical angle is equal to n sub 4 over n sub 3. And finally, the critical angle, therefore, is equal to the arc sine of n4 over n3. When we plug in the numbers, that's equal to the arc sine of n4, which is 1, divided by n3, which is 1.5. So let's see what that angle is for a typical fiber optic cable. So 1 divided by 1.5, take the arc sine of that, and we get 41.8 degrees. Which means that the critical angle should be at least 41.8 degrees. That means theta sub 3 should be at least 41.8 degrees. So if theta sub 3 is 41.8 degrees, what should theta sub 2 then be equal to? So let's take that triangle and draw it right here. There we go. So we have theta sub 3, which is 41.8 degrees. We have this angle right here, which is theta sub 2, and we want to know what that is equal to. And of course, you realize in this triangle that this angle plus that angle should add up to 90 degrees, or theta sub 2, therefore, is equal to 90 degrees minus 41.8 degrees, which means that theta sub 2 is equal to 40. 8.2 degrees. Added those two together, you get 90. All right. So, theta sub 3 should be greater than or equal to, that means theta sub 2 should be smaller than or equal to 48.2 degrees, which means now we can figure out how much, uh, how big theta sub 1 can be. So, again, using Snell's law, we now write that n1 sine of theta 1 should equal n2 sine of theta sub 2. And let's say we're looking for theta sub 1, that means we're going to divide both sides by n sub 1, so sine of theta sub 1 equals n2 over n1 times sine of theta sub 2. Take the arc sine, theta sub 1 is equal to the arc sine of n2 over n1 times the sine of theta sub 2. And plug in the numbers, that is equal to the arc sine of n2, 1.5 n1 was 1 times the sine of theta sub 2, which is 48.2 degrees. And let's calculate, see what that is equal to. 
So we made a minus plus 90, so we don't have any runoff errors. Then we multiply, that, that would take the sign of that. Here we go. And multiply times 1.5. And wow, we have a problem. Actually, not a problem. Let's see, what do we get? So the quantity in here, let me write it down, is equal to the arc sine of 1.12. Now, of course, we cannot take the arc sine of 1.12. So what does that really mean? Well, that means that the angle of incidence has no limit. You can make the angle as large as you want to, because no matter how large you make it, uh, theta sub 2 will never be any smaller than 48.2 degrees, which means that theta sub 3 will never be any larger than 41.8 degrees. All right, so let's just see if we can prove that we're going to make theta sub 1 equal to 90 degrees and see what would happen to theta sub 2. All right, let's do that. So we have the n1 sine of theta 1 is equal to n2 sine of theta 2. And we're going to make theta sub 1 equal to 90 degrees and find out what theta sub 2 is equal to. So turning the equation around, let me move out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. So n2 times the sine of theta 2 is equal to n1 sine of theta sub 1. Dividing both sides by n2, we get sine of theta sub 2 is equal to n1 over n2 times the sine of theta 1. And so theta sub 2 is equal to going to be equal to the arc sine of n1 over n2 times the sine of theta sub 1. And now we're going to make theta sub 1 as large as we can, so let's make it equal to 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, so we're looking for the arc sine of n1, which is 1 over 1 1.5 times, of course, the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. And let's take 1 divided by 1.5 and take the sine arc sine of that, we get 41.8 degrees. Theta sub 2 is equal to 41.8 degrees. Okay, now this is a really interesting result because what we found was that <clears throat> the critical angle needs to be at least 41.8 degrees, which means that theta sub 2 has to be less than or equal to 48.2 degrees. And if we make the angle theta sub 1 as big as we possibly can equal to 90 degrees, the largest that theta sub 2 can be is 41.8 degrees, which means there is no such thing as a maximum angle. Theta sub 1 can be any angle, and as long as you shine light into this fiber optic cable, it will never leave the fiber optic cable and just keep, keep on going. So that's kind of an interesting result. Not what I expected, but interesting. All right, and that's how you do that.